Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Yeah. 
Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor, em, Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Licinius, ruler of Abilene, during the high, priest, the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. At the beginning of our liturgy today, we sang one of my longtime favorite hymns. Come, thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins, release us. Let us find our rest in thee. This sets the tone of our worship today, asking for the calm that comes with forgiveness of sin and freedom from fear, and also asking for the coming of the Christ into our lives now. A second candle is lit on our Advent wreath we move a bit further into our observance of Advent, this time of preparation for the coming of the Christ. Remember, we prepare for the coming of the Christ in this season in three quite distinct meanings of that coming. We look back and we prepare to keep the ancient festival of the coming of the Christ into human history the Incarnation. Secondly, we prepare ourselves in this season for the coming of the Christ into our hearts and households again this Christmas time. And thirdly, we prepare ourselves in this season for the coming of the Christ at the end of the ages to be our judge. Last Sunday, we spent quite some sermon time, considering how we prepare for the time of judgment by how we live our lives now. Looking at the season from a slightly different angle, I find that our scriptures today focus my attention on the middle of the three meanings of the coming of the Christ, our spiritual experience of this Christmas now. What we do now the love and care with which we accomplish our preparations and how we use our time in serving others, these need to be viewed from the perspective of eternity. We do, what do the use of our time day by day, the use of our God-given and personally developed talents and the use of our financial resources, how do all of these stack up in what Jesus would have us do for the building of the kingdom now? The book of the prophet Isaiah, which we read on this Sunday in year A, declares, 
A shoot shall come forth from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. From the apparently dead family tree of Jesse, father of the great King David, would come the Messiah. On this second Sunday of Advent, this Jesse Sunday, we celebrate the fulfillment of the vision of Messiah from the prophet Isaiah in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. On the second Sunday of Advent, now in your sea, we hear the words of the prophet Malachi announcing what God says to the people. I am sending my messenger to prepare a way before me. On this Sunday, instead of a psalm, the church gives us a canticle, the song of Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist from the first chapter of the gospel according to St. Luke. At the birth of John, Zechariah begins his song praising God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. Zechariah, after lengthy praise of God, shifts his attention to his own son. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Right here, now, in the shadow of death, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of COVID death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. This is the very same John the Baptist we hear of in the gospel today, this time from the third chapter of St. Luke's gospel. The word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare, prepare the way of the Lord. On this second Sunday of Advent, we are introduced to John. We will hear much more about John next Sunday. For now, the message we are to take with us today is very simple. Prepare the way of the Lord. The question we must ask ourselves today is, what can I do to prepare for Jesus to enter into my life today, this week? What does it, what needs to be cleared away to make room for me to serve God in my life this week? What do I need to take on that prepares for the Christ by serving others? With each gift we purchase or make, with each decorative box or bag we mail or set aside to put under the tree, with each action we can be forenting, fanatic, and anxious. Or we can be quietly rejoicing in the person for whom the gift is prepared. This can be a season of frantic busyness or a time to rejoice in the people that God has given us far and near, to rejoice in mind and heart during this blessed season. With each gift we purchase or make, wrapped and sent or given, we are able to rejoice in Jesus 
who is the reason for this season. Jesus, who is God's ultimate gift to us. Again, this Christmas time. May we be blessed this week to prepare in our hearts and in our lives to welcome again the Prince of Peace. Come, thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Amen. Amen. Please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again and bore into the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us pray for the needs of the church and of the world. Almighty God, Hear our prayers for the Church Universal, its members, and its mission. Let us pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, our presiding bishop in the Episcopal Church, for Andrew, Alan, and Mary, our bishops in the Diocese of New York, for Robert, our priest, Hyacinth, and Eliza, our deacons, for the wardens, vestry, and lay leadership of this parish. Let us pray to the Lord. O God, our sustainer, inspire our efforts to serve in your name. Let us pray for our parish outreach programs, especially our brown bag lunch program. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, our Governor, hear our prayers for the world, our nation, and all in authority. We pray for Joseph, our President, and Kamala, our Vice President, for the members of Congress and the members of the Supreme Court, that they may work for justice, equal opportunity, and civil rights in our nation. For Antonio, the General, the Secretary General of the United Nations, and for the leaders of the member states, that they all may work for peace and international cooperation. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, our Creator, hear our prayers for the welfare of the world. We pray for peace with justice in Yemen, Syria, 
Libya, Sudan, Myanmar, and all other areas torn by violence. We pray for the care of God's creation, especially for God's guidance in the installation of the new heating and cooling system here in church. Let us pray to the Lord. Most gracious God, we pray sharing the thanksgivings and concerns of our local community. We give thanks for those in the parish celebrating birthdays from December 5th through December 11th. Odi Awatarai, Berkeley Taylor, Deji Soyeju, Udo Okeki, Mazi Sigmund, Sean Patrick Gaylor Hall, and Deirdre Henry. We give thanks for and we pray for our homebound parishioners. Henry Cadigan, Elsie Chapman, Lorma Davis, Lacent Giddens, Iris Cassis, Iris Wilkinson, Dorothy June Shetterer, Hazel Mayer, Olive Vaughan, and Pearl Carter. Let us pray to the Lord. Most merciful God, we pray for those who are sick or in need. We pray for Warren, Joseph, Mary Alice, Sheila, Philip, Camden, Elise, Ruth, Stafford, Tim, Ray, Anthony, Stuart, Yvonne, Gloria, David, Olufemi, Bill, Judy, Robert, and Jody. We also pray for all who suffer from the COVID-19 virus and for their families, friends, and medical caregivers. We pray for those who are unemployed and for businesses that have closed because of the pandemic. We pray for all who continue to suffer because of the hurricanes and forest fires. We pray for the people of Afghanistan amid the military and political turbulence there. And we pray especially for those struggling to leave the country in fear for their lives. We pray for the people of Haiti suffering still from the earthquake and tropical storms. Let us pray to the Lord. Most loving God, we pray for the departed. We pray for Henrietta Gaylor, Catherine Tuhi, Patrick Erlinson, Joseph Di Bartolo, Adiola Agbontain, Leonor Suarez Taylor, Will Santiago, Nancy Ward, Sylvia Bird, Julian Carmichael, Hisham Belkadi, Justina Uruakpa, Ray Eli, Sean Hoyt, the Reverend Dr. Michael Ajari, Horace Thompson, Richard Francis, Wendell Hendricks, and for those we love who have died, especially those who have died in this past year. We pray for those who have died because of the hurricanes and forest fires. We pray for those who have died from the COVID-19 virus. May they all rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the poor and the neglected. Almighty and most merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected people whom it would be easy for us to forget. The homeless and the destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and to turn their sorrow into joy. Grant this, Father, for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
if you sent your 2022 pledge to the parish office, it is in the basket this morning to be blessed. If you have not turned in your 2022 pledge to the ushers, please get one from the ushers now and give it to the best members as they come forward during this hymn. Please stand for our hymn of thanksgiving and dedication. because it has pleased you to enable your servants to offer gifts for your church. Remember them in your love and grant them your true peace and joy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you both. Thank you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, y'all. Peace to all of you out in video land. Please be seated, you all here. 
In a couple of minutes, the ushers will be taking up an offering for those present in worship here today. We appreciate your generosity. We can't currently take up an offering electronically. For those of you on YouTube, please remember the parish and its many ministries and send in your offerings to the parish office, 311 Huguenot Street, New Rochelle, New York. Thank you to all who have made your pledge for 2022. Thank you for your timely support of this parish, particularly in this anxious time. If you have not yet made your pledge, please consider it prayerfully and send your pledge into the parish office or bring it along next Sunday. Thank you for your support. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, died. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, <coughs> Almighty Father, now and forever. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <clears throat> 
after the deacon distributes a communion to the choir, um, she'll come around front, and if you come up in single file to receive. Thank you. Deacon, the body of Christ, the bread. Amen. A prayer for those unable to receive communion physically. Blessed Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be richly upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.